Welcome to my guide on Street Smart for the Sega Genesis. Now, this is going to be a bit on the short side because it really isn't a lot to say about this game. But yeah, let's get into it. So, first off is the controls. A is punch, B is kick, and C is jump. If you press A and B together, you will get a backflip, as shown here. And if you press B and C together, which is kick and jump, you get this move. It takes a bar of health, it's invincible during the entire animation, but don't let the look confuse you. Even though the character punched rapidly, only the last hit will actually hit the opponent. I also talk about the gameplay, and again, this game is really simple, so there isn't going to be much to talk about. But first things first, let's talk about our buttons. So I mentioned that A is punch and B is kick. But if you're up close to the opponent in close range, you would get a different punch and a different kick. So right here, you can see that I'm doing like a gut punch and a side kick. But if you get closer, I get an elbow instead, like this faster kick. So in this playthrough, you're going to see me use the punch a lot since it comes out instantly, both the far version and the close version. And there might be a fight or two where I use this kick instead. Unfortunately, this game does not have combos, and the reason is because you become invincible for a very brief moment when hit. So as you can see here, I'm trying to hit this guy with two attacks in a row. Unfortunately, the second attack is going right through him. In this case, and you see me using this a lot during the playthrough, you kind of have to hit them in a the rhythm, like your second attack should come out right when their invincibility is wearing off, so like one, two, like that. And yeah, that's pretty much it for Street Smart. I mean, I didn't talk about jump kicks, but the reason is because I rarely use these as you can only hit opponents who are airborne with jump kicks. So right now, I can't hit him with this, but if he jumps, I can. And I should also mention that it's possible to get hit out of the air from a ground attack, but it's kind of hard to demonstrate in this mode, so you might see that happen in the playthrough. Um, and with that being said, yeah, let's get straight to the no death run. Alright, and welcome to my no death run of Street Smart. So in the beginning of this playthrough, I'm going to talk about the CPU, how they work, and pretty much how to get through the entire game without dying, because Outside of one fight, there's really only one strategy you need to get through this game. I'm gonna set the options here. You don't really need to change the number of lives or the continues. I'm gonna set the game to hard. I don't know the difference between hard and normal. I played the game on normal at first, but it didn't really feel that much different. Anyhow, so here we go. This is the first stage, and they the enemy has like a huge stat advantage. But don't be overwhelmed, it's much easier than you think, and the reason is because of the strategy I mentioned. So, how do you get through this game? Well, as mentioned in the gameplay section, you can attack in a rhythm where your next attack comes out right when the opponent's invisibility wears off. In a two-player match, this would be not recommended because the second player could just attack you immediately. But the CPU doesn't like doing that here, so they kind of just fall for the strategy over and over. And there's only one CPU in particular where you shouldn't do this. Alright, and after you beat each stage, you will win a certain amount of money. For this fight, you get $10,000. And in between fights, before you go into the next fight, so, you know, you see the stat screen here, but right after this, you're able to bet the money you have on either yourself or the opponent. And you'll notice that the stakes change. So it says times one, I want to go to the enemy, and it says times two, when I go to myself. That means that whatever amount I bet, let's say 10,000, because it says times two, I'd get 20,000 back if I win. Which is weird because why would you bet on the enemy? It says times one, so you pretty much get your money back, like just 10,000. So I don't know why anyone would do that. Anyhow, as for how the betting works, it's simple. If you bet on yourself, all you gotta do is defeat the opponent and you would get whatever money you bet at times the stakes. And, yeah, so with the stakes, when you bet on the opponent, if they take a life off you, that counts as winning the bet. So let's say you bet 20,000 on an opponent and it says times two. If they take a life off you and then you win, 
you would get 40,000 back. So that's pretty much how the betting works. And I didn't get to talk about the stat upgrades. Like, this game is going by really fast, but... Thankfully, I already explained the gameplay, so there's not much to it. Well, to the gameplay, I should say. And as you can see here, this takes this times 3, I, I bet 40,000, so that means after I win this fight, I would get 120,000. Still using the strength, same strategy here. Again, it's really easy. It's stage 5 where it, gets a, it can get a bit messy, and you see that happen. So, after you win each fight, you might have already seen it by now. Uh, you're able to upgrade your stats, and the amount of points you're able to get to upgrade, uh, it goes higher and higher as you get further in the game. Like, you get to a point where you're getting 4 points per win, or even 5, I think, at the end. And you'll realize that I'm upgrading life. Now, here's the thing with the stats. Life, that's obvious, it increases your max health. Power increases how hard you hit, and the defense, it makes you take more hits, like it's harder for you to lose life. I prefer increasing life first, because that means that you can do your special move more often, the B and C together. And that's going to be very important for the fifth fight, and like, trust me. Attack, you don't really need to upgrade it, you can see that even with low attack power, I'm still doing a decent amount of damage. Defense. It's also important, but you can upgrade that after attack, because having more defense doesn't allow you to do the special move more often. That's what life is for, since the special move takes uh, one bar to use. So I maxed out life. I'm going to max out power here, but after I do... Well, not max out, but I'm going to increase the power by 3 points, and from every fight after this, I'm going to focus on increasing my defense, and it's going to pay off really big later. So I'm getting a lot of money now, I got 360,000, it's only going to get bigger. But before I talk about the money a bit more, I need to talk about this fight right here, Stage 5. When I first practiced, like, when I was first trying to figure out how to do a no-death run of this game, this fight I was stuck on for a very long time. Running up to this guy does not work. Like, he has better range, his attacks is very fast, and that roll attack is very annoying to deal with. He'll sometimes do it once or two times in a row, or even like four times in a row. It's like the worst. So what you see me doing here is that, now that I have maxed out life, I can attempt a special attack many times. And the goal here, if you want to get through this fight without dying, you want to keep your distance. Like, you really gotta watch out for the roll, if anything. And when he's about to close in, that's when you want to do your special attack. As mentioned, you are invincible during the animation, and only the last hit will actually hit him. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this fight. It, it's pretty easy to lose a life here, like... I've had attempts where, like, you know, I went in with this strategy and, like, I failed. I either didn't get the move out, or I mistimed it, or he hit me before I even did it. Like, stuff like that. So from here on out, the game becomes even easier. You can just max out your defense and you become a tank, pretty much. So why bet money? As you can see, I have a lot. I can't keep saying that enough. I have one million right now, or more than one million. Well, the amount of money you have by the time you beat the game affects the ending you get. If you have zero dollars when you beat the final boss, you get the bad ending. If you have more than that, you would get the normal ending. And if you have eight million or more, you get the best ending. Um, as for this fight, uh, as you can see, there's two of them on screen. I don't know why the game doesn't tell you that before you do the bet. But the strategy is still the same. You attack them in a rhythm and you should be fine. Like, there's sometimes that you can get both of them at the same time, like bo both of them in a rhythm, just attacking them at once. But there's times like this where it's better off just attacking only one of them. And then once you get rid of one, you can deal with the other one in the same exact manner. If you max out attack after maxing out health, you might like lose health really fast. This is why in this run, like completely focus on defense. Well, I should say like focus on life first, then increase power by three points, and then completely focus on defense until it's maxed out, and then you go for attack power. If you do that, you should have no trouble getting through this game uh, without dying too. Don't again. The only stage that I find really difficult is stage 5, but other than that, it's really not that bad. So our stats is looking pretty better right now, we got a lot of health and a lot of defense, so we can take plenty of hits. 
and so is our money. Soon, soon. I'm trying to think. Two, two, three. Okay, it's not quite enough to get the good ending. We gotta bet one more time, but we're almost there. We almost got enough money to get the good ending. So again, you have to face two opponents at once. This is the last time you have to do this. So after this, we'll be back to one-on-one -on -one fights, and we're already close to the end of the game. Because this game's only nine stages long, and if you know what you're doing, or heck, like, like this is a no-death run, right? But if you're just playing through this game, or you set the life to max, like five, or and it continues to five, you could honestly get through this game on your first try. Like, it really isn't that difficult. I don't think I really talked about how I feel about this game. I'm, uh, no, I'll save it for the credits. Like, because there are two uh, important fights coming up. It's still the same strategy, but it's a bit different, at least for this fight. So at 7 million and 70,000. At this point, if you know how to like know that this game, again, just keep betting on yourself and you get the good ending, no problem. There is something nasty that can happen, but I'll talk about that when we get there. So again, now it says times 4 if I bet on the opponent, and times 3 if I bet on myself. I could get more money if I bet on him and lose a life on purpose, but again, this is a no death run, so it wouldn't make sense for me to do that. So here's Tommy. This is the, actually the final boss of the arcade version, and instead of me using the punch off, like using the punch every single time, I'm now switching to kicks. And I feel like it's better for this fight because when I try using punches, it still works. But I feel like he gets out of range much faster than if I just use kicks, because obviously kicks have longer reach. And again, you see me do that for this fight a lot. Thankfully, because of all that defense I built, you realize that he only took one bar off me, and like, heck, even right there, like it took two hits from to take a bar off me. If you built attack only, not only will his attacks like do two bars even, but Building attack power in this game doesn't feel that satisfying, like, it still takes about the same amount of time to defeat opponents. There is a difference, don't get me wrong, but it's not significant enough in that you'd prefer over the fence. So I maxed out the fence, so I might as well put the rest of the points into power. And this is the last time you'd be seeing this screen, so... That's our endgame stats, and coming up is the final boss. 21 million. So this is where I can talk about the side effect, the side effect I mentioned, excuse my English, but as you can see, I already reached all of the digits. The maximum amount of money you can get is like 99 million, right? If you go over this number by betting on like doing the right bets, like the bets where the stakes is higher. So example for this fight, I'd get more if I bet on the opponent. If I did that right at this moment, bet all my money on the opponent, I'd go to it's times five and I have 21 million, so I'd have like 105 bil million, right? Because that digit doesn't exist, that one and that one the 105 million, the game would like reset my money amount. So even though I'm supposed to have 105 million when I win, it said I'll have just five million, which is not enough for a good ending. So if you get greedy with the money, don't be surprised if that happens. But that, you shouldn't bump into that issue. Again, oh, you only need 8 million. Me having, like, this amount of money is very unnecessary. It doesn't, like, change the ending or anything like that. As for the final boss, again, it's the same strategy. You can either use kicks, like I did the stage 8, or you can use punches. Um, yeah, so about this game, uh, it's simple. I don't hate it, I don't really like it. I liked it as a kid, don't get me wrong, like I had fun, but looking back at it, it really is just like a very bare bones beat em up. And it's fine if you had fun with it. I think this game's a decent distraction, but it's not something you should put a lot of time into, especially since like, I do believe that anyone can beat this on the first try, especially if they put their lives and continue some acts. And yeah, that's... That's Street Smart. Um, really quick game. Ended up with eighty-five million one hundred sixty thousand dollars. And yeah, that's it. Um, here's the ending. And yeah, I really don't have much to say. Um, I'll end it with this at least.
Um, I am going to show all the endings after the credits, hopefully you stick around with that, or you can just go to the description and the timestamps will be there, as I usually put in the beginning of the video. And um, as for going for the endings, you see it right here, this is the best ending, it's... I mean, he's rich, I don't know what else to say. But yeah, um, the only difference with the endings is the picture that's here. You won't get anything else that's different. The credits are still the same, and you still be able to enter your high score if your score is high enough. I didn't mention that if you use a continue, you lose all of the money you have on hand. Not the money you bet, but like, let's say you have 50,000, right? You bet 10,000, you still have 40,000 left. If you continue, you will lose that 40,000. But if you win that bet, you still get that money back. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I already said everything about this game. Like, I didn't really get to talk about how screwed up the CPUs can be. Um, even though they're easy to beat, it's kind of annoying that um, when they're attacking, you can't hit them during their attack animation, but they can hit you during your attack animation. Um, their movement seems way better than yours because you're moving at a snail's pace during the entire game. I didn't really talk about that because it doesn't really matter. Like, you can still get through the game even with these issues. And... Yeah, that's it. I think this game's alright. It's a decent distraction for like 20 minutes. And yeah, I'll see you next time and I hope you enjoy the endings. Thank <laughs> you.